Hey guys, welcome back to Jason Journey Builds. We're back out in the shop today working on a uh, quick project for myself and for one of my buddies. Uh, we needed a run stand. Uh, I used to actually have one when I built that uh, my V10 Mustang. I put the V10 and the transmission on this platform, this lower platform down here. Well, since then, I converted it to a table, <laughs> and my buddy um, and his friend are putting together a, uh, some big cubic inch uh, Chevrolet engine, and they were wanting to be able to run it, test it out, and uh, make sure you don't have oil leaks and all that kind of stuff. So I needed to build one for myself, and uh, so they kind of pitched in a couple parts, and uh, I gathered up all my stuff again. I had a radiator that they had set of fans out of an old car. So this is kind of hodgepodge, but I uh, just want to show you guys how easy it is to do something like this. and um, It's actually a good idea uh, for the reason I wanted it is because I'm building a you know hydraulic cam, uh, flat tappet cam, it's not a roller, and you have to break the cam in, and as soon as you get this the engine running the first time, you're going to want to pull it up to about 2,000 RPM and let it sit there and run for about 30 minutes. And you're not supposed to do that with your new headers. And I, I ordered the new Tom's Bronco ceramic coated headers. And, and I don't remember seeing it on theirs, but I know from just past experience on brand new headers, they, they specifically tell you not to break in a cam with them. I guess they, do, they need to go through heat cycles. But when, when you break in a cam, you're just sitting there, you've got a constant load on it. So anyways, that's why we're going to do that. This is the old pair of headers I have. This is just an old engine, so you guys don't freak out when you see it all open. This is the engine is the freeze plugs are pushed out of it. It's, it needs everything, so it's just a block. So to start with, what I used was just a frame that I built. I had some extra steel. This was when I built the frame. It was uh, years ago, back in 2010, I think. But it's uh, three by five angle iron, uh, quarter inch thick, and basically I just built a big rectangle. And then I had some real heavy casters I put underneath it, so it it rolls around, you know, easy. So it, you can get it where you need it. So just from there, you sort of have a blank slate. And honestly, I just went out in my my metal pile and trying to see what I could scrounge up to build this. Steve Grant, the guy that built my AOD, he had a uh, bell housing for off of a C4 transmission. And those bell housings unbolt, and that's all I needed because with a Ford, the 302, of course you guys know, you're going to have to be able to bolt your starter to the bell housing. So I started with that. I used an extra motor mount that I have down here. Again, this stuff is just thrown together. So it's just got a motor mount down here. I cut it on an angle, bolted it to the bell housing. The front is just... Uh, some leftover tube steel and a couple pieces of channel. I just got it bolted straight to the to the motor mounts. And the rest is just a bunch of old material that I had laying around. The uh, the radiator came with the '70 Bronco. It's come out of I think a a, a late '70s F 150, I think F 100, whatever. So. Radiator is in good shape and it's perfect for this. Snapper gas tank. <laughs> so if you guys go back and see my uh, V10 video, one of the, the first videos I posted, uh, this was the gas tank I was using running my V10. I uh, built a little gauge pod. We're going to put the gauges and tachometer in it here in a minute. But it's really, uh, it's, it's this simple. We, we'll have to get some hoses and tie them up, but just take a little bit of time and then you can sit here and run your engine. So let me show you what I'm going to do for the Chevrolet engine um, to adapt it to this frame. So my, my buddy, he brought this over. They they got this off of Summit. It's just your regular uh, engine cradle roll around the shop on. So what I told him I would do, I would take my frame and I'm going to put some members across here. We'll, we'll take the casters out and I'll weld some studs to the frame and they can sit their cradle right on top of this and then it's adapted for the Chevrolet engine. 
I don't have it here, so I don't. I told him I said I don't really really know how to adjust for the headers or where the manifolds are going to run or anything like that. So the I felt the easiest thing I could do is get all this mounted up and then let them handle it from there. So anyways, my plan is for the rest of the day, well for the rest of this project, is put the gauges in. I've got a fuse block. I'm going to wire it up. I'm going to put the fans on a relay. I want to do it right. I don't want to fry a bunch of stuff, you know, trying to overload it. So the fans will be on a relay. Uh, I have an ignition switch. I have toggle switches. I'm going to go ahead and um, have power for an electric fuel pump in the event that they're going to, um, they don't have a mechanical fuel pump on the engine. So the engine that we're going to put in the Bronco will have a mechanical pump, so I won't have to worry about it. But I'll go ahead and make provisions while we're, while we're working. Anyways, let's uh, put some switches and gauges in. So one of the first things I need to do is go ahead and mount this fuse block. This is something I've had off of another project and just kind of kept. And basically what it does, it has a bus so we can bring my, my power in here. Then I can actually just use, you know, blade fuses here and it's basically just a six circuit block. So it just, you know, you kind of hold on this kind of stuff, stick it back and until you need a, until you have a use for it, I have a use for it now. So what I'm going to do is just bolt it up here. Anyways, that's there now. All right, so what we have is just some, uh, just a cheap set of gauges they picked up from a local parts store. And all I'm going to install is the water and the oil pressure. It's really the, our main, your main concern when you're running the engine. Put this stuff in. Here. Then we got also the, the oil pressure, water and oil pressure. So I got this autometer tech. Actually, a nice gentleman I bought the uh, ZF five speed. Give me this tech. He just had it sitting in there in the shop. So this is perfect uh, use for it. So we'll uh, get it stuck through. Matches those gauges. This is, this is an autometer, so it's actually <laughs> an expensive tachometer. I've got a universal ignition switch. You can pick these up about anywhere. And two toggle switches. One again is for the fans and one will be for a fuel pump. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are like me if you've ever done a lot of wiring in your shop. I can't throw it away. So I'll, I'll coil it up and, and hold on to it. So what I have is a um, power wire that's got a fusible link in it I can use. We'll wire that up to the, and that, this will be our main, this is a heavy gauge wire, so this will be our main power to the fuse block. And then all these other wires I have are from old projects and you know they're, they're labeled so I'll be able to keep track of it like starter solenoid. I think this is HEI yeah, so this would be your ignition power. So the good thing about this is if I use these wires uh, and try to keep, if I have the right ones, it'll be easier for whoever borrows this thing to uh, figure out which wire goes where. So I'm sure I'll tag them too, so um, there won't be any, won't be any confusion. My battery holder is going to be on the left side of the engine, so I'm just going to run the power from up there from down there to up here. I just don't want to cut this too short. <laughs> Make sure there's plenty. So what I'm going to start doing while I have 
uh, well, when I know where these wire, all these wires are going right now, is just go ahead and place them. Like this right here is my exciter wider for the solenoid. And it actually says start solenoid on it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start running wires to the ignition switch. I went ahead and pulled it back out so I could show you. If you look on the back, it has battery, accessory, start, and ignition. So it's basically pretty, pretty simple. Your start is what actually um, excites your solenoid. So get a wrench and loosen that up. We'll hook that up. We'll run power to it. And then we'll run a wire from here that stretches all the way to the engine, the, your ignition portion. So that'll power a coil or um, if somebody wants to use an MSD or something and remote mount the box on the frame somewhere, they can do that. But at least we'll have the power for it. This is my solenoid. I'm not gonna tighten them up yet because they may need to turn some certain direction when I put it in there, but we'll get them located. So again on here, this one says HEI ballast resistor. So basically I'll know that this is my power to the ignition. And I don't have a lighter out here right now, or I would go ahead and seal these off. These are those uh, heat shrink connectors. Again, this one goes to the ignition port on the, on the switch. All right, this is my main power to the switch. And that goes to your battery terminal. So this will be my first circuit. This is the power to the ignition switch. Okay, so I'm gonna, my next two circuits will be power for the fan and for the fuel pump. So this is just the power that will actuate the solenoid on the fan. And then this power, right now I'm just gonna run an accessory power out for the fuel pump. And if they wanna, you know, if somebody needs to use that, they want to put it on a relay, they can. So the power for the switches comes from the block and then they're just blade terminals. So I just got power to each one and then I can run another blade off the other side to the, uh, to the relay. Okay guys, this is a relay. It's a resettable relay. But um, what this basically does, instead of running all this power all the power to run the two fans through the switch because you'll end up burning up the contactor in the switch you run it through a relay and uh, basically you'll have a a main wire from the battery to this and you'll have a small power wire that excites it so it's uh, so basically you're just you're not putting all the power through a switch that's not designed for it and this right here this is a what, 30 amp uh, relay right here so this should be fine for these two small fans. So if you look on just about all relays that you buy at the store, they'll have uh, these different uh, numbers on it, 85, 86, 87, 87A, and 30. Well, I've used these a lot in the past. So if you'll always remember that 85 is your ground, your 87 and 87A is your um, it's, if it's normally on or normally off. So if you want to turn the key on and, and whatever you want to power, you want that to be normally off. So I usually use 87, not 87A. 30 is your main power from your battery. And then 86, that'll be the power from your start on your key switch. Anyways, uh, just in case you didn't know, I want to explain that. So this is my power wire from my switch to the fan. And this needs to go in 86. So right now we have 30 and 86. We'll go 87 will be our power down to the fans. 
And then our 85 is our ground. We don't use the 87A because that would be the opposite position where we want it. And then this is our main power down to our fans. It goes on 87. And then we have a black for ground. Put that on 85. So what I want to do is I'm going to drill and put me a bolt right up here that will actually uh, we'll use it as a grounding stud. We'll go ahead and wire up the lights on the gauges. So those will light up, and we need the, we need to have a place for this ground to hook. So this will operate. So anyways, we'll just cut it short, loop it back around to the stud. Okay, I'm combining the ground and the ground for the relay in this one connector here. So I'll go like so. I'm not ready to put this on because I still have the tack ground and the ground for the lights to take over there. Okay, so what I was going to do is just kind of give you an overview of the things that I did here at the end. So like my power for my lights and my gauges be my white wires. I combine the, the white wire from my tack, my two white wires on my gauges here, one here, one over here. Uh, and then I tied them in. Uh, basically, the switch goes back to your power on when you turn the key switch on it goes to your ignition so that's where your lights are coming on so as soon as I turn the key on I get lights on all three gauges the ground is just a common ground all three went to the same and I pulled them up here so my these are my grounds the, uh, the wires to my fan my, my 30 wire from the relay and a ground just basically just ride them around tie them into my fans here. Luckily these are just uh, two wire fans and if you reverse them they'll turn backwards so what I did to start with I just put power to them and found out what direction and I want them to suck air through the radiator so I've got those wired in uh, together so basically when the fans come on both of them come on together and uh, as far as the wires here y'all don't look at my my, <laughs> my ground there, I was just trying to check my system, make sure everything worked. Anyway, I don't have a solenoid uh, to hook up yet, but my purple wire is a solenoid. My pink here is my ignition, and the green is my tack. So we have those wires ready to go to the engine. The temperature sensor. All that will get plumbed to the engine once it's installed, you know, into the intake. We'll just keep all the fittings together and the same thing with the fuel pre the oil pressure. Well, the tubing will run over to the engine so we can keep track of that. So for all practical purposes, uh, this thing is completed except for where I need to weld the cross braces in for the Chevrolet engine. But uh, here I'll show you guys real quick that it does work. So again, we're wired up, you turn the key on, we have lights on our gauges. This one's just a, a different light, it's sort of a, a green. But uh, fan, on. All right, well anyways guys, uh, I just wanted to sh show a quick video of, of building a quick run stand. There's really, there's a thousand different ways to do it, and it's, as long as you got your engine supported and you have water to put on it, you know, it really doesn't matter how you, where you mount it, how you put it. So, uh, um, we'll try to get some action shots on this real soon with, uh, with our new engine. Uh, once it's assembled and built, we'll put it on it and test it out and let you guys see it in action. But anyways, uh, this is just something I needed to get done. I uh, hope it helps out a friend of mine that was needing one. And 
we will uh, be back with you real soon. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Well, you guys take care. Have a great day.